Hello. Be your best self. Ways to be the highest and best within you. This one going to deal with a really practical and very useful exercise and how to find your true purpose in life. I'd like to share with you a really practical and very effective exercise. How to find meaning and purpose in your life no matter what's going on outside. So that you'll feel much more motivated to do the things you need to do in your daily life. It makes it easier to get out of bed in the morning when you don't feel like there's some kind of purpose and some kind of meaning to what you're doing. And this exercise will really help you do that. But before I share the exercise, just let me give you briefly a little bit of the background about where it came from so you can see how valuable it is and how effective it is. I want to credit where this idea comes from. This exercise, and I'll describe it in a minute, comes from the principle of begin with the end in mind. And it means you begin a task with, the, with a clear image of where you want to go, where you want to end up with it. It comes out of the book by Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it's one of the principles they talk about is to begin with the end in mind. So I apply that to life. Imagine you're at the end of your life. The book basically looks at the life of people who are highly successful in different spheres of life and looked at what's the basic principles that these people used to be successful. And this is one of the, the principles they used, was to begin with the end in mind. So if you apply that to your life, you're, you don't not necessarily beginning at the moment, but we can begin each day with the end of life in mind, in a positive sense of what would you like to have contributed to the world? What would you like to have achieved? What would you like to, how would you like to have been? Because our purpose can to do with how we do something rather than what we do. So I first started using this exercise in workshops I was giving. Now, oddly enough, these workshops were not on personal development. The workshops were on IT training. But the challenge in these IT trainings was that we were asked to do trainings for people who were long-term unemployed. These were people who had maybe changed their job at one time. They were, they'd been in a heavy, a men who'd been in a heavy industry such as uh, shipbuilding or steel work or something like that and um, women returners as they call them women who had um, raised a family and wanted to get back into the the job market they didn't really have any skills that were in demand and they were they wanted more out of life than a low paying job and so they were wanting skills that they could use to bring to the workforce so they could get a better job so as I say it was mostly people who were who had been unemployed for quite a while because of the challenges they faced and were faced with going back into the workforce but were very challenged at it because they didn't have the confidence or skills to enable them to have a, a job that would be decently paying. When I thought about this I realised, well, the thing is you can teach somebody a skill but that doesn't let them motivate them to do anything with it. And if these people don't feel good about where they are in their life and don't feel motivated from within themselves, then they're not going to bother. That We'll give them a skill, we'll give them a good training in computing. That doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do anything with it. If they've been out of work for a while, they're going to feel a bit unmotivated, they're going to be kind of weary or scared, about and reluctant in many ways to go back into the workplace. Um, they may have many fears around it. So we need to help them feel really motivated to overcome their fears, to overcome the resistance. And so one of the things we taught them was this method of, um, of getting in connected with the sense of purpose and your sense of values and what's really important to you in your life. And it's really simple. So what you do is you get yourself a piece of paper and something to write with and you get yourself comfortable and you imagine that you've just had some kind of letter or email or something. So you've had the communication from a young person that you really care about. This young person has written to you and has said to you, What's really important in life? What really matters? You know, this person's really saying to you, if you're looking back on your life, what are the things that have really mattered, that have really made a difference, that you're glad you did, or you're glad you expressed? To add to this, you can even imagine you're actually at the end of your life and you're sitting on a rocking chair or a, or a hammock on a beach somewhere and you've pretty much done most of the things you wanted to do and you're looking back on your life and thinking well what really is important what really matters in my life what was I glad I did and that I spent time on 
So you, with your pen and piece of paper, you write to this this young person. It could be a child even. You write to this young, this child, this young person, what was really important to you. And you're going to use really simple language. Uh, nothing too intellectual, nothing too grand, just, just really simple stuff. Very simple, basic things. And you write down what it is and you need to say to this person. And uh, I distinctly remember the first time I did this exercise with a group of these long, long-term long unemployed people. And at first I wasn't, they were sitting there with a <laughs> pen and pencil, all kind of wondering about this. And then one of them started writing and then another one started. And next thing you know, within a few minutes, they were all busily <laughs> writing away. They got, very, they got very engaged with this. And at the end of it, I said to them, okay, you don't need to share anything you've written if you don't want to. There's no compulsion to, to say what you've written. But if you feel like you want to tell anybody else about what you've written, that's fine. And we'll just go around the room and anybody wants to make a comment about what they've written, they're welcome to do it. So it just it turned about everybody wanted to say something about what they wrote. And it was all the eternal truths of life, you know, the, the importance of friendship. Like one important principle is never go to bed angry. Always resolve a conflict you have. If you've got a partner and you've got a conflict with that partner, always resolve it before you go to sleep so it doesn't hang over into the next day. I don't want to say too much about what they came out with because I want to create space for you to find what you want to write. But at the end of it, one people would said, I said, well, it's very interesting to look at that, to look at what you've written and how much time and energy do you give to that? How much time and energy do you give to the things that really matter to you? And whether you're letting yourself be distracted by things that don't really matter to you? And so be a little bit of a discussion on that. And so we could see at the end of it, it was a very enlightening process for people. The upshot of all of this, once the, the course had been completed, evaluators came in. They came in from a, a local university who were evaluating the effectiveness of the course. They evaluated their skills, but they also evaluated how motivated were they to get a job, because the purpose was of the course was to help people get a job. And so me and the other trainer were sitting with the evaluators and they were saying, you know, we've never had such a group of people so highly motivated to find a job. They rather sheepishly said to us, can you tell us what you did? How did, how did you do that? And so we explained to them, we explained to them, well, we didn't just give these people a computer training course because that was the focus of the, of the job skills that we're learning. We also give them some personal development and we worked on their sense of purpose. We helped them discover the sense of purpose and the sense of direction. And it really, really worked. And the independent evaluators verified that. So we used that for other courses we did too. In fact, that model became a, a model for IT training um, for other organizations as well. But, but that's another story. So the thing about purpose and direction, it can be good to develop skills. That can be a very important part of expressing your purpose and direction. But it's actually much more about our attitude and our values. Say, for example, you might say, well, perhaps one of these long-term unemployed people get, then got a job in a call center. Now, how would that help them express some kind of deep purpose? The quality of a person's life is largely dependent on the quality of their relationships. And uh, somebody, for example, working in a call center is going to learn patience or has the opportunity to learn patience or they're working in some kind of IT support and I've, I've done IT support and you certainly learn patience doing IT support and you certainly also has a chance to learn compassion and empathy for other people in their situation. If somebody's struggling with a piece of tech, technology, and it might be a very basic problem, being able just to be kind and compassionate to them because a part of us comes alive when we do that. When we get beyond ourselves, when we get past ourselves and being, being too focused on ourselves and begin to focus on other people and serving other people and helping other people. And people that we don't know that well or don't know at all, that brings out something within us. That brings out a depth of compassion and empathy that we didn't have before. So you can be doing a fairly ordinary mundane job and expressing deep spiritual values, important qualities, important spiritual qualities and becoming, becoming through.
person doesn't need to necessarily develop new job skills to do that, but it can be a channel, it can be a way, an opportunity for them to express and develop these new qualities. So there's a lot can be gained from using these kind of exercises that put you in touch with something because when you're, somebody's writing, you know, what's important in life, you find out what's really important to you and often it's qualities, often it's ex it involves expressing yourself in a way, in a certain way. And so it may have not much to do with a specific job. Now developing those qualities may end up meaning that the person then gets into specific types of activity that are more closely aligned with those qualities, with what's closely aligned with what they feel is really important. And like for example something I, I came up with in my own life is that forgiveness is really important and I've got a project I work with to do with forgiveness. I also discovered that, you know, I knew that nature was really important and as I worked with that, I became involved in a tree planting project. So there's ways that getting into these values can enhance our current life situation and then lead us into a new situation, a new, new forms of activity that we didn't expect. <laughs> I never dreamed I was going to set up the Global Forgiveness Initiative. I never dreamed I'd set up the Global Rewilding Initiative to do tree planting, but I did. And uh, a lot of it came out of cultivating and ex exploring the values that are really important to my inner self and finding ways to express this in my daily life. Now, your actual purpose in life might not be about what you do specifically. It might be your attitude to what you do, your attitude particularly to other people. And whether you're self-serving or whether there's an aspect of you that can serve other people and give to other people for the sake of the giving. And it might be about cultivating specific qualities like kindness, compassion, patience, and all things that improve our quality of our relationship with others. In fact, if you have any doubt about what your actual purpose is, a really good one is just to decide, oh, is to cultivate kindness whatever else is going on in your life that for the next well, next, next month, next six months, next year, whatever, you're going to really cultivate kindness. That becomes a really useful purpose. Purpose doesn't necessarily mean something outward, um, the, a specific outward goal. A purpose can be an inner thing to do with a specific capacity, cultivating a specific capacity in how we relate to others. From a perspective of this deeper, wiser part of us, then that is what it's really life's about very often. And as I say, that can eventually become a specific purpose that, that uh, takes shape as a specific purpose or goal in the outside world. But it's the inner comes first. The, we need to get the inner bit right. And then in some kind of noble purpose can come into our life that we can act on. So that's why I, I, can, I made this into an exercise of writing to a young child because then it gives you a chance to express in really simple ways, very straightforward ways to somebody else. Allow this inner sense of you to, to express itself, your kind of heart sense, your soul, you might even call it, your highest and best within you gives a chance to contribute, to say, well, this is what I would like life to be about. Because your real purpose is often about not what you do, but it's the way that you do it. And that that's the key. And that what gives value to something is often the way we do it, not necessarily the specific thing we're doing. Of course, that relates to it as well. You can't be a, be stealing from people <laughs> and, and, and stay, you know, that is not going to be line up very well with somebody who's trying to learn kindness and compassion. Please um, get yourself a piece of paper and something to write with and get yourself comfortable. And just imagine somebody who's very dear to you as a young person. It could be even a, a, young, a young child. And, and they've written to you and says, what's important in life? What really matters? What really matters? So what are you going to tell this child about what's really important in life? About what really matters? And just imagine you're looking back in your life and you're thinking, what really counted? What was really important? You can also ask yourself, what would the highest and best within me want to say to this? But usually it's enough that you're, you're caring and you're concerned for this 
young child is going to bring out what really matters and what's really important to you. So then once you've spent some minutes writing that down, it's good to reflect on that and look at, pick something out of it that you can give your attention to, that you can spend more time with. It might be a specific skill you would like to express or a thing you would like to do. It might be a specific thing you like to do that you need to develop skills in order to do it. So, you, so once you've written that down, you bring yourself into present time and you look at what you've written and how can it fit into your life now, this day? You know, is there something you want to cultivate? Is there a skill you need to develop? Um, you know, keep it simple, keep it straightforward. How can you do more of and sp or spend more time doing that this part of you expressed? Um, because what it's doing is it's bringing up your values, some of your core values. And how can you give more time and attention to these core values? And what will happen is the more you do that, the more life will feel worthwhile. Even if outer circumstances, outer circumstances don't change much, even if your job is the same or what have you, it'll feel much more purposeful. You'll feel much more fulfilled in it because it's, it's fulfilling something deeper within you that's more than just the job itself. And then the job itself will probably start to change and you find yourself doing other things. Anyway, I think you'll find this really useful and I hope you work with it and do it as many times as you like to keep yourself on track and moving forward, becoming more of the highest and best within you. Bless you on your life's journey. Take care.